Tech family, five years ago, I started this channel because I was looking for a powerful laptop that was also portable. At the time, I was a laptop's worst nightmare. I was doing a variety of very intensive tasks such as back-end programming, video editing, and competitive gaming. Plus, I needed my laptop to be super portable so I could take it with me to the co-working spaces that I worked from. What I quickly discovered was that laptop manufacturers were far off achieving such a device. Each of the large green laptops that I tried had terrible cons. Jet engine-like fan noise felt so hot to the touch I could cook eggs off them, and yes, I did actually try that, or they weighed more than my car. Well, after using this laptop, the ProArt P16, I thought I might be done. Close the channel, publishing one final video, just buy the ProArt P16, that's the answer. But the more time I spent using it, the more its shortcomings became apparent. So I'm left with this feeling that this is definitely a top five laptop for someone looking for performance with portability, but it's not a clear winner. So today, I'm gonna to tell you why the ProArt P16 is so special, the issues that I had with it, and how it compares to other laptops that you may be deciding between. The ProArt P16 includes AMD's latest Zen 5 HX processor. This gives you very strong performance for professional applications. But what's special about this chip is it draws less power than laptops with competing processors from Intel. Heck, in Cinebench, which tests the processor when maxed out, this laptop actually beats many Intel laptops that draw significantly more power. In fact, compared to all other processors for high-powered Windows laptops, this Zen 5 CPU delivers the most performance per watt that we've ever seen. And that includes the much hyped ones from Qualcomm found in smaller, less powerful devices. By the way, if you are wondering why Intel's latest Lunar Lake isn't here, it just wasn't available to review at the time this video was published. And just like Qualcomm's processors, it is also designed for smaller, less powerful laptops. Anyway, the only processor that is designed for power users that beats this one in terms of efficiency is Apple's M3 Pro and Max chips. But it's not just the CPU that is great in this laptop, it is also the GPU. It includes either an NVIDIA RTX 4060 or 4070. These are powerful enough for some intense graphical tasks or even playing AAA games. And continuing with the trend of this laptop being very power efficient, its graphics is fed the optimal amount of power at 105 watts. Above that power level, there is massive diminishing marginal return, so very little gains in performance to be had. Anyway, this overall power efficiency of the ProArt directly translates to many benefits. It allows this laptop to be super compact and lightweight. In fact, it weighs less than some 14-inch gaming laptops. It also doesn't feel warm to the touch at all in light use, and during performance tasks, the heat you feel is very reasonable. FYI, the reason the ZenBook Pro 16X from 2023 is so cool to the touch in our graphs is that its keyboard deck lifts up off the laptop. Back on the ProArt though, its fan noise is also very good, dead silent in light use and competitive with similar laptops during performance tasks. It uses the same three fan configuration as the G16. But unlike when I originally reviewed that laptop, I noticed no annoying high pitched fan noise coming from the ProArt. So that is great. Plus, its battery life is decent enough. Okay for performance tasks and very good for light tasks. This is particularly impressive when you factor in the laptop's very high resolution 4K Plus display. Normally, laptops with higher resolution panels have poorer battery life. Let me show you how this all compares to Lenovo's Legion 7, their portable 16-inch gaming laptop. Yes, the Legion 7 delivers stronger CPU performance with its Intel HX chip and slightly stronger GPU performance from its RTX 4070. But to do that, the Legion draws up to 90 watts more power to the CPU and 35 watts more power to the GPU. Hashtag not worth. Because of this, the Legion's keyboard deck and palm rest always feels very warm to the touch no matter what you do on that laptop. Plus, the Legion is significantly larger and heavier than this ProArt. By the way, when walking you through these results, I actually feel like our quantitative data is not painting as good a picture of the ProArt as it should be. For example, when you look at our fan noise measurements, this is the max fan noise that we measured during a very intensive task. Many professionals, whether coders, video editors, or even 3D modelers, don't always run their laptop at max performance. In the case of the ProArt, the fans become inaudible the moment an intensive task is complete. So the majority of time that I used the ProArt, it was actually really quiet, even for performance use. Moving along with what I love about this laptop, its chassis feels very premium and its black color looks slick and stylish. It's also surprisingly more fingerprint resistant than we expected for a darker colored laptop like this one. 
Its keyboard is very comfortable, standard layout and backlit. Its trackpad is as good as you're going to get from a mechanical one, and its display is gorgeous. It has a 4K Plus panel which is incredibly helpful for video editing, as you can view native 4K footage on it. Its high resolution display is also excellent for software development and other productivity tasks. That is because the display's high fidelity allows you to see lots of small text clearly and have several windows visible. The display also has a wide colour gamut, which further solidifies its excellent status for professional creative work. And it is a touchscreen, if that matters to you. Ports, for the most part, are a win for this laptop. You have a good variety, including an HDMI 2.1 port and a fast SD card reader. Creators will definitely appreciate this. Also, the USB-C port on the right side does support charging, so you can charge the laptop from either side, which is convenient. The ProArt speakers are also very good. The sound is clear, they get loud, and just feel powerful to listen to. Not quite as good as the MacBook Pro 16s though, which has the best speakers of any laptop. These lack bass in comparison, and the sound just doesn't seem quite as natural. But overall, top tier as far as laptop speakers go. Webcam of this laptop, definitely not a strong suit. As you can see, the colors look off, particularly my skin tones, and I look grainy. But wait, there's more. Just like infomercials that sell steak knives, there is more when it comes to the pro art. In the USA, it starts at $1,900 for the configuration that has an RTX 4060, 32 gig of memory, and one terabytes of storage. This is very fair and the same price as Lenovo's excellent Yoga Pro 9i, which is aimed at a similar user base. Just like that laptop, I would expect to see this one go on regular sales, making it an even better deal. But the one thing I like about the ProArt over the Yoga Pro 9i is that you can get it with 64 gig of memory. Memory is now soldered and not upgradable on most laptops. This allows for it to be faster, but the issue is that many laptops now can't be had with more than 32 gig. Creators and many other professionals love lots of memory. Having a 64 gig configuration available in the ProArt for a price of $2,700 that also includes an RTX 4070 and two terabytes of storage is a really good deal. The MacBook Pro 16 would cost you a whopping $4,600 for a configuration like that. All right. As you can see, there are a lot of fantastic things about the Pro Art, but it isn't perfect. My biggest issue is the display's 360 nits of brightness and its 60 hertz refresh rate. As this is a glossy display, some folks may find it hard to use in a bright environment. If you have any bright light source behind you, you'll see reflections. The display's brightness just isn't enough to combat these. I found myself occasionally smashing the brightness up button trying to get more out of it. Also, many people are going to be very disappointed to see a max refresh rate of 60Hz. I personally don't think this is the end of the world for a laptop like this, but it is disappointing. Scrolling a web page won't look as smooth, and neither will gaming. The narrative from Asus is that you can't get a 4K Plus panel right now that has a high refresh rate, but that is kind of odd, as Razer did have one in their Blade 16 from last year. Next, although the ports on this laptop are good, it is a bit disappointing that the USB-C port on the right side only supports 10 gigabit speeds and not 40. Also, the ProArt, although powerful, is only available with a max of an RTX 4070. The ZenBook Pro 16X, which was Asus's professional creator laptop from last year, had a much more powerful RTX 4080. This means that the ProArt isn't a pure upgrade from that laptop, which makes no sense at all especially as its gaming sibling, the G16, which has the same basic chassis as this one, does have an RTX 4080 and a 4090 variant. I hate when manufacturers draw these artificial lines between gamers and creators. Both need the same underlying hardware, just give them the best of both worlds. Most gamers I know don't just game, they do it on the side of some other professional work. Next, the trackpad. The trackpad and the accuracy of its click is excellent for a mechanical one. Unfortunately though, as it is extremely large, I found myself resting my palms on it, and its palm rejection was just not good enough. On several occasions, my mouse pointer would unintentionally jump to a random location. Also, on the trackpad, it does have the Asus dial built into the upper left corner. I get what Asus are trying to do here. Create a convenient way for creators to scroll through a timeline and that sort of thing. It just doesn't work. Both Taylor and I noticed lags and the scrolling just didn't feel natural. I ended up having to turn it off. Now, since all laptops do have issues, let me show you how the ProArt stacks up with some of its main competitors. Versus the MacBook Pro 16 for a creator or coder. 
I feel the MacBook Pro 16 wins overall. It has a brighter, fast refresh rate display, and in real-world performance tasks like editing our most challenging 4K videos, I found the MacBook Pro 16 felt more snappy. The Pro Art just felt laggy, especially when I switched between Premiere Pro to other applications that were running. Also, the MacBook Pro 16 is able to maintain its full performance when on battery. The Pro Art is not. Asus does not allow you to run this laptop on its highest performance mode when unplugged. But with all that said, it's hard to recommend the MacBook Pro 16 over the Pro Art for most buyers, given the immense difference in price. The Pro Art just delivers so much more for the money. It's like 80 to 85% of a MacBook Pro 16 for 60% of its price. In fact, in some respects, the Pro Art gives you more. It's more portable, you can play the full catalogue of Windows games on it, and it can run Linux. So, if your max budget is less than $3,000, you'll want to strongly consider getting the Pro Art over the MacBook Pro 16. Versus the Yoga Pro 9i, Lenovo's top tier creator laptop. It's a tough one. The Yoga Pro 9i is just as competitive price-wise, but it has a brighter, fast refresh rate display. Its keyboard is even more satisfying to type on, and the Yoga Pro 9i feels significantly cooler to the touch during performance tasks for the same amount of fan noise. But the Pro Art does have some tricks up its sleeve. It can be specced up with a beefier configuration. It lasts a lot longer on battery, it is lighter than the Yoga Pro 9i, and it looks far more modern. Overall, I'd personally buy the Yoga Pro 9i as I don't use these laptops on battery and I care a lot more about a bright display and a cool feeling laptop. But I can perfectly see why someone would choose the Pro Art instead. Versus Asus's own Zephyrus G16, the gamer version of this laptop, you may be tempted to get that over the Pro Art. That's because it has a brighter matte display and it has a faster refresh rate. It can also be had with more powerful graphics like I said. Well. If you bought the G16, you'd be missing out on the significantly high pixel density of the Pro Art's display. For something like coding, the Pro Art's display is far crisper, and I feel better than the G16's, where small text can look a little bit fuzzy. Also surprisingly, the Pro Art has a more comfortable keyboard. The Pro Art can also be had with more memory than the G16. And finally, if you do get a G16 with more powerful graphics, you'll have to get it with an Intel processor. If you're primarily gaming, get the G16. If you're primarily doing professional work, get the Pro Art. If you want to find the best prices on these laptops or see all the laptops that we recommend, you'll find them on our website, so go check that out. If you want to support the channel and help us create even more content, become a Patreon subscriber or YouTube member, links below. And something free that you can do is just get subscribed, click the like button, it costs nothing, and it takes less effort than I put into my last date. Till next time, go do something awesome with your day, and I will catch you later.